Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part two of this presentation, physicist Wal Thornhill continues his exploration of the cultural phenomena surrounding the life and career of Albert Einstein. With the passage of time, it seems that both the popular culture and much of institutionalized science have only grown more certain that Einstein was right. However, as Thornhill explains, the mythology of celebrity has the ability to distort perceptions and rewrite history. Einstein won the Nobel Prize belatedly for his services to theoretical physics and especially for his discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect and not for his highly publicized theory of relativity. Although physics students today are often taught that it was a quirk of the Nobel Committee to give the prize to Einstein for his quantum work rather than relativity, the truth is that everyone at the time, including Einstein, believed it to be the more surprising result. He proposed that light consists of small massless particles, or quanta, called photons, which carry energy that is proportional to the frequency of light. Here again, he indulged in mysticism by introducing a physically impossible zero-mass particle carrying energy, in defiance of E equals mc squared. This introduced the absurd wave-particle duality into electromagnetism. But by discarding the mystical paradoxes of relativity theory, it is possible to see that classical causality can be reinstated to our understanding of quantum interactions of light with matter. Light merely imitates some thing carrying energy at the speed of light from a transmitting atom to a receiving atom. However, it is now proven that there can be a so-called subtle, non-local connection between subatomic particles. They are said to be entangled. Both of these terms are euphemisms for an instantaneous connection and are symptomatic of the stultifying effect of Einstein's postulates. Clearly, there is an instantaneous longitudinal electrical signal via the polarizable ether that establishes resonance between two separate atoms. So when the transverse light wave arrives later, a fixed quantum of energy is accepted by the first in-phase resonant receiving particle. And since all matter is connected in real time by the subtle longitudinal electric force, also known as gravity, the energy of the light wave is not available to any other particle once it has been accepted by the resonant receiving particle. Light is a combination of two signals between atoms, the direct longitudinal resonating signal and the slower transverse electrical wave. The classical approach also removes the confusion of physical clocks with the concept of time intervals, which is absolute. Clocks simply tick at different rates depending upon their energy which is directly related to the potential and kinetic energy of all the particles in the clock with respect to all other bodies. The most profound objection that can be raised to special relativity theory is its total reliance on relative motion. Thomas E. Phipps Jr. points out in his excellent book Old Physics for New that timekeeping depends asymmetrically upon state of motion. Which of two clocks runs slower depends on which has been moved, yet relative motion of the clock does not depend on which has been moved. The latter results in the well-known twins paradox, where the twins separated at high speed age at different rates. But who is to choose which frame of reference is the high speed one when the choice is arbitrary? Phipps asks, is that too profound an antinomy for the professorial mind to encompass? He earlier concludes, the search for a physical cause of clock behavior must ultimately conduce to Markian thoughts, the mere fact that the fiducial system is inertial already sets up recognition of a subtle influence of distant matter on timekeeping. The global positioning system merely adjusts for a slower clock tick in Earth orbit. It does not confirm Einstein's relativity. Installing Einstein as an icon of genius was a cultural and historical phenomenon. It was Sir Arthur Eddington who championed and publicized Einstein. In 1975, Subramanian Chandrasekhar wrote about conversations in 1933 in Cambridge, England, which included Eddington and Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford is reported saying to Eddington, you are responsible for Einstein's fame. He was referring to Eddington's post-war expedition to measure the bending of starlight close to the sun during a total eclipse. Chandrasekhar writes, 
I expressed to Eddington my admiration of his scientific sensibility in planning the expeditions during the darkest days of the war. To my surprise, Eddington disclaimed any credit on that account. Indeed, he said that, left to himself, he would not have planned the expedition since he was fully convinced of the truth of the general theory of relativity. Eddington was driven by his need to re-establish his authority following his pacifist role in the First World War, that irrational paroxysm. In the catharsis that follows such outbursts, people were looking to forget the unbearable memory. It could be said that Einstein's mysticism was an escape picked up in the arts by the Surrealists. Salvador Dali was inspired by Einstein to paint melting clocks and distorted figures and landscapes. Einstein's ticker tape parade reception in New York reveals that this was not about science. In Chandrasekhar's words, Astronomy had always appealed to public imagination, and an astronomical discovery, transcending worldly strife, struck a responsive chord. The meeting of the Royal Society at which the results of the British expeditions were reported was headlined in all the British papers, and the typhoon of publicity crossed the Atlantic, from that point on, the American press played Einstein to the maximum. With his oxymoronic thought experiments, Einstein became the unacknowledged but leading New Age mystic. The Big Bang creation myth built upon his work welded science and religion back together. As Einstein remarked, the only deeply religious people of our largely materialistic age are the earnest men of research. If anything shows how far we have strayed from real science, Consider the poignant story of the post-mortem examination of Einstein's brain. Dr. Harvey, who sliced the brain, found no unusual traits in form, volutions or size. Einstein was a normal human being who was thrust early in his life by Eddington into the celebrity circus. His iconoclastic papers on relativity would not pass peer review today. Einstein's popular image was untarnished, although he achieved little after the bohr heisenberg Copenhagen School theory of a-causal quantum mechanics gained acceptance in 1927. In real science, cause and effect cannot be divorced. Einstein complained of quantum mechanics, God doesn't play dice with the world. But ever since, students have been taught two unscientific philosophies that are mutually exclusive. Ironically, Einstein's postulates stand in the way of understanding gravity, light and quantum interactions in simple classical terms. Looking back on his life at age 70, Einstein gave a clear evaluation of what he believed were his accomplishments in a personal letter to Professor Solovine dated 28th of March 1949 and made public many years after his passing. You can imagine that I look back on my life's work with calm satisfaction, but from nearby it looks quite different. There's not a single concept of which I'm convinced that it will stand firm and I feel uncertain whether I am in general on the right track. Scientific understanding is provisional. It's a tactical error to declare someone a paragon of genius. In this era of peer censorship, it stifles debate and dissent, which is essential for the advancement of science. It accentuates confirmatory bias. It can halt progress. That's the situation in the 21st century, as scientists celebrate 100 years of Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein's book Relativity, the Special and the General Theory, published in English in 1920, was supposed to be understandable by all. Yet he later joked with the Polish physicist Leopold Indfeld that the description generally understandable on the book's cover should be changed to generally not understandable. The simple fact is that his theories make no physical sense. Never have so many books been written by so many experts purporting to explain a theory, but with so little success. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.